Hello, Alex.、Um, Hi, Audrey. How are you? Pretty good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Okay, great, great. Thank you for making the call. No,、um, um, my pleasure. Thanks for finding the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know how busy you are. Yeah. So, so we have how much time do you have?、Um, look, I, I have no、um, deadline, so you know,、mm-hmm. let's maybe、um, work to a bit of an agenda and、um, see how we go. What about you? Are you constrained?、Um, I have another meeting in an hour or so. So may, maybe in an hour of time. So、great. yeah. So give or take. Um, I, I just received this、uh, document, which I was just briefly reading the pre-election briefing of the social enterprise opportunity.、Um, yeah. So, so、um, when I originally spoke to to Corey, you know, he mentioned that、um, it would be useful for you just to get a bit located in terms of what's happening in New Zealand.、Mm-hmm. So I thought one way. About that, we're sort of sending you the document that we've、mm-hmm. just sent to our own MPs and、mm-hmm. political parties、mm-hmm. in the run-up to、uh, the election.、Mm-hmm. Um, so,、um, I mean, the degree that we get through it now or not, I mean, you know, we can just have the conversation rather than a,、mm-hmm. a presentation. But I thought it might be a useful <laughs>、mm-hmm. thing to maybe,、um, you know, if nothing else, read on the plane on the way over to the World Forum. No, it, it is. It is very useful, actually. I, I just finished、uh, reading it. And I, I do ha-、uh, have some questions and some notes, so I don't know、right. if you're you're okay with that. Maybe we just use the presentation as the agenda, and I can also introduce briefly where Taiwan is、um, in in each of the the slides, if that's okay with you. No, that that sounds great. Yeah, I mean the the, the one thing I mean I'm I'm not sure it'd be interesting to sit, test this in conversation, but、sure. one of the things I've been、um, thinking on recently is reflecting on how some of the More evolved or mature social enterprise sectors have sort of almost found their way organically,、mm. and I think there's a there's a sense of second wave sector development, and I think you know you would potentially sort of put New Zealand、um, to a certain degree, Australia and, and Taiwan into that, where we're actually able to see the shape of. The infrastructure, as a result of others having done it, you know, that, that, that's exactly right. That's exactly so, so there's、right. almost a sense of choreography around this work, which we are involving on, which was probably far more、um, hit and miss and experimental、um, mm-hmm. for for the m- more mature market. So,、mm-hmm. so I think it's it's interesting to be able to take this kind of almost, and obviously it's still system stuff, but、right. you know, this more kind of intangible、uh, approach to architecture. Yeah, that, that that sounds excellent.、Um, so、uh, let me try sharing、uh, the screen with you and see if you can see the screen any moment now,、um, like this. Yes, okay, great. It's working. Awesome.、Um, and like, if I put annotations, <laughs> does it also go through? Yeah,、okay. that's great. Okay, great. great. <laughs> yeah. So, so I guess this is really,、um, and this is after a bit of trial and error over many years of engaging with, I suppose,、um, with government, but also other sources of power.、Mm-hmm. You know, be that the corporate sector, the philanthropic sector,、uh, mm-hmm. local government, to try and find some of the key messages which seem to resonate with them.、Mm-hmm. So, rather than Seeing social enterprise as a good in itself, really、mm-hmm. describing it more as a means to an end,、mm-hmm. and how it is complementary to a number of the existing priorities they already have.、Mm-hmm. So the these kind of sort of six messages are, are the things that we've sort of landed on, <laughs> as I say, after seeing what works and 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 doesn't work. But I I think you know what comes out there is there is、um, anxiety、mm-hmm. uh, in government around. Uh, unequal economic development、mm-hmm. um, and um,、uh, how that sort of、uh, surfaces itself in a geographical context, but、mm-hmm. also demographical and cultural.、Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, this this sense of where government wants to go itself around wanting no longer to be the provider of everything, but I think even if it doesn't articulate it well itself.、Uh, An enabler or facilitator of more self-directed development.、Mm-hmm. That's important in the New Zealand context,、uh, especially with Maori development.、Mm-hmm. Um, so the tribal economy and self-determination being a very core part of、um, identity and strategy for、mm-hmm. for Maori.、Mm-hmm. Um, obviously. Um, 
the, the the piece around unlocking new pools of capital. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're not giving more. Mm-hmm. Um, the tax take isn't really increasing, um, but the 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 need, um, social environmental need, is increasing. So new pools of capital and really the the argument around impact investment and matching social models to also funding models uh, mm-hmm. as a, a, a successful strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really as a, a, you know, this idea of innovation and capability. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, and, and for me personally, I think there's quite a radical innovation agenda here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of innovation has been um, in elite pockets and mm-hmm. still is. And there's a sense of uh, social enterprise as a, as a, as a channel to broaden um, access to skills and capabilities around um, innovation and entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think, you know, this last thing of like, um, I think the SDGs, from my mm-hmm. sense, are actually getting traction and perhaps more traction than people ever mm-hmm. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. or expected. Yep. Um, and so social enterprises being a kind of um, a connection to those global goals and also solidarity of a global movement. So so that those sort of six things, you know, sort of uh, end up sort of being quite a holistic systems um play and i think you know putting social enterprise in that context is far more powerful than sort of you know simply saying look this is social stuff that can pay for itself yeah <laughs> all right um so a, a few questions on, on this slide so i noticed that you you um if i hear correctly um say that social enterprise is somehow its own sector right that overlaps with other sectors did, did i get a terminology right yeah well i think it depends what, what level you want to interrogate this at. I think simplistically, it's helpful to construct it that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, in reality, I think we're talking about social enterprises being a space which represents the convergence from different sectors. Right. So, so like the it, first three the sectors, and then we put social enterprise in the middle or something like that? That's right. I mean, you know, so social leaning into commercial, commercial, mm-hmm. commercial lead into social. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and and also that space or that market being enabled by the way the sort of government is conducting its business. Mm-hmm. So, so I think it's helpful to try and find an identity and say, you know, let's put edges on it in order to think about then how we provide the infrastructure to support it. Mm-hmm. But I think in reality, it's probably more nuanced and complicated than that. Right, because because when I read the definition uh, that that you use, which is first that it must trade, that is to say, to overlap with the for-profit sector in a certain way, and then um, it must do it not just to further shareholder interest, but further the social mission in some way. I, I think it, it really does put uh, the edges, as you said, uh, to, to form its own sector. Um, but what, what about the, the government, though? Um, like, does the, does the um, social enterprise need to tackle a problem that the government deems as worthy or internationally as SDG worthy or, or, or whatever uh, issue that they find important is actually good enough, even though it doesn't overlap with the, the government identified issues? No, I mean, we, we, we certainly, um, re- I'll respond to this in a slightly different way. We very much need government here as a a partner and a, and a key stakeholder in in the, but it it mm-hmm. is not the owner or the director of, of. Mm-hmm. so so you know a healthy social enterprise sector will inevitably um, create innovation and solutions around priorities which are of interest to the government of the day mm-hmm. but it will also really be directed by communities or individuals trying to change the problems that are important to them right so which, it's, it's bi- bi-directional which, right so so it yes. has its own agenda setting power. It's not just the government setting the agenda for, for the social uh, enterprise development. It's uh, also surfacing issues that the government did not uh, consider as important, but nevertheless is. Is that the general idea? That, that's what, I mean, it, it's interesting if you if you compare the way that government tend, or li- at least in the New Zealand context, and I think it is comparable um, in other countries, the way that government thinks around social and the way that thinks about economic are are mirror images of them really so our business uh, strategy is to create the conditions for more businesses to start up and succeed and it may have interests in certain sectors but Mm -hmm. generally it wants to unleash innovation across the board 
whereas in social, it identifies key priority areas, which it then contracts services to try exactly, and make Exactly, exactly, yes. Mm-hmm. So, so the, the social thing is very kind of like, um, you know, narrowing in, whereas yeah, yeah, the business that, that, that's, is very much yeah, open that, that, That's what I'm drawing here, right? It's a, yeah. essentially a one-way um, agenda setting uh, yep. from the government to the social sector. Yeah. But, but so, social enterprise, in, in your idea, does not work like this. No, no, I, I, th- I think it's, it, um, you know, it, it will, at its best, it will test government to think itself as a facilitator in mm-hmm. terms of supporting the development of enabling infrastructure, mm-hmm. but, uh, but then also as a, as a market participant. So mm-hmm. increasingly, you know, it will want to purchase the outcomes of what mm-hmm. social enterprise mm-hmm. deliver. Now, mm-hmm. whether that is through the direct um, purchase of goods and services or... Mm-hmm funding which relates to specific social outcomes, which is a more difficult and unformed market. But mm-hmm. nonetheless, that's where we're going. So I always remember that there was a great slide from one of the guys in the UK government that was talking around um, the UK government's role was market builder, mm-hmm. regulator, and then participant. Right, right, right. So the whole mm-hmm. idea, it's there to set the stage. Mm-hmm. It's there to make sure that, you know, things work as well as they can. And that's obviously where government has a monopoly. Mm-hmm. Um, but then lastly, its ultimate interest is to actually, you know, purchase the outcomes or mm-hmm. facilitate the purchase of those outcomes from other parties. I see, I see. Thank you. That's that's very clear. So um, so the, the second and the last question on this slide is that you mentioned SDGs as the, the, the connector that connects um, the, the local scene to the international and evidently it, it's getting a lot of support in especially the uh, world forum that's, that's going to happen um, and, and that you are organizing. Um, so are, are there specific um, topics outside the SDGs that you also think is important? I, I understand that Taiwan and New Zealand has a uh, agreement on Aborigines um, development, which is uh, notably kind of not any of the SDG, but nevertheless important. Uh, have you seen anything that are similarly interesting in an international collaboration perspective, but not uh, clearly you know, uh, sorted into one of the, the SDG slots? That's a good question. Um, I mean, my sense of it, some of it's around framing. I mean, I think that, you know, most things that you would want to see progressed Mm -hmm. can be allocated under the goals in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I think there is maybe a more nuanced point around sort of solidarity movements, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, which does get picked up, I suppose, um, I th- you know, top of my head, but you know, sort of, you know, sort of democracy and, and civil mm-hmm, rights, but mm-hmm. maybe not, um, you know, maybe not as nuanced as it could be. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, d- I do think it's interesting that within the social enterprise agen- agenda, uh, you know, depending where you are, um, mm-hmm. the solidarity and the cooperative um, movement or where the social is, i.e. is it external or internal to the organization, have different um, Mm -hmm. uh, levels of priority. So, you know, if you you speak about social enterprise in Italy or Spain, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. the cooperative movement is actually, uh, you know, know, uh, central. But, um, you know, in the case of the UK, I think largely you could say a lot of it has been around the you know, the kind of almost the professionalization of the social sector in the United States, it's been very much this kind of entrepreneur solving other people's exactly. problems. So, mm-hmm. so I, I think it, it's interesting that that solidarity element, I think, is by its nature, because it is actually more equal, it doesn't have the same kind of um, powerful cheerleaders. And so mm-hmm. sometimes, although it's uh, huge, mm-hmm. it doesn't necessarily get the same level of... Um, you know, profile. So, so is there a, um, because you mentioned Spain, is there a similar, like, uh, cooperatives or um, even platform cooperatives, as people are tend to say nowadays, uh, movement uh, locally in New Zealand that, strictly speaking, starts from the uh, social sector owning their own, you know, co-ops 
and then evolving to to trade with the market? No, n okay. not really at the moment. I mean, New Zealand's got quite a deep history in cooperatives, but a lot of them have been um, really pragmatic mm -hmm. structures, you know, which reflect agricultural mm -hmm. an agricultural mm -hmm. economy. Um, I, I and I think you know have l been less advanced by a you know, sort of a solidarity or power ag uh, agenda. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with the with the exception of things like, you know, Lumio or, or what mm -hmm. have you, I, I think mm -hmm. we're we're probably, um, yeah, we, we don't we don't really have um, momentum in that movement. The, I mean, I think again, I mean, you mentioned this sort of the indigenous. I, I mean, I think within Maori mm -hmm. development, the, it, it works differently. But there's a mm -hmm. sense of you know how community ownership plays out in those contexts, which is analogous, but but mm -hmm. but different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So yeah. yeah. So I mean, so, I mean, one of the things I've been kind of watching from a distance, but has been the you know the you know the community finance, the community shares, the cooperative movements sort of mm -hmm. happening, but you know, in, in the UK as there's been a retreat of a lot of services, you know, basic shops, mm -hmm. leisure centers, pubs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from remote areas. And actually there's been a real renaissance in community ownership there. Um, and while we have had some of that decline, we haven't had that same level of um, response as, as, as yet, at least. I see. So that, that remains one of the areas that could be developed more. I, mm -hmm. I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because when I uh, just before I entered the cabinet, I was visiting New Zealand and uh, living with the Inspiro Lumia folks, and and there is a very strong uh, cooperative solidarity um, theme there, and and they told me very explicitly that, that that's not the norm, uh, and it, it, it like um, they they were seen as uh, somewhat idealist, and it's not the the norm in the social enterprise sector, so so perhaps that could be developed more. All right. Thank you so much. That that's a very complete picture. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's even some sort of weird stuff with our legal forms around cooperatives, which actually don't necessarily lend themselves. The, the cooperative legislation is quite specific, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of I think you have to have like, you know, um, 50 percent of members as active producers or active purchasers. Mm -hmm. um, so it it um, while you can you can do sort of legal acrobatics to generate governance models um, which are analogous it, mm -hmm. it it's not it's not necessarily straightforward mm -hmm. uh, anyway but that that's the mm -hmm. detail but sometimes the details are you know <laughs> determine you know why something happens mm -hmm. or not yeah it does matter because otherwise um, it's actually easier to have a closely held company with its own you know rules that behaves exactly the same way but it's not constrained by law uh, we're, right. we're seeing that in Taiwan here also we have we had a uh, very active co-ops uh, movement about 25 years ago, but, but there is one entire generation of people simply selecting the company form, uh, but doing more or less the same thing. But then uh, the term social enterprise is like 100 uh, times more visible and recognizable than co-ops. So, so now, uh, so now everybody is, is kind of just going through the social enterprise umbrella, but that does uh, dilutes the conversation around solidarity somewhat. Yeah, so, yeah. so that, that's our situation here too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think um, one of the things that I'm absorbing, which has already happened in more established markets, and I think is always a risk in any developing market, is as you get momentum, there's a risk of fragmentation as well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know, there's almost a tribal sense of within a very broad banner of people using business models to, you know, affect social change or community benefits. There are a huge diversity of ideologies, values, interests, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I think trying to hold that space with, without homogenizing it is mm -hmm. is kind of a real um, mm -hmm. strategic challenge for sector mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. and um, you know so you know this idea about the the politics of of the social enterprise movement actually being something if not managed well is, is actually really disabling mm -hmm. um, because you know human nature likes to just <laughs> to fragment turn on itself yeah too yes often. yeah I, I used to um use this slide um, personally. Um, sorry, it's, it's in Chinese, but uh, I hope the emoji goes through. Um, so, so this is social uh, and this is enterprise. 
uh, and then this is about um, solidarity, governance, um, uh, and then this is about the environment. Um, and I used to, and still do, uh, explain the social enterprise or social innovation sector as the link uh, between the, the four different concerns um, or yes. axes of innovation. And they do interact in a way in an ecosystem because the, the more the social sector involves in the solidarity and participation in enterprise, the more enterprise is environmentally conscious and improve the social conditions and so on. But I, I used this to, to explain that it, you don't have to do all four things at once as long as it's in the um, diamond, it's still considered part of the broad social enterprise sector. Um, yeah, no, very good. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, um, so so you, you you've come um, across a definition here, uh, but I, I don't see percentages though. Uh, yeah. No, we've we've deliberately kind of um, avoided, um, you know, putting figures on those, those things. Um, I, I I personally don't believe it's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's not even mm -hmm. accurate. Um, so, I mean, for example, if you take an organization that's working in a sub-market condition, they might be, you know, selling a good or a service at a sub-market rate. So, mm -hmm. therefore, <laughs> you know, they they pre-distributed rather mm -hmm. than having to redistribute. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, I think those things are, are un, unhelpful. Mm -hmm. um, and, again, this goes into a bit of the tribal stuff between um, – and I think it's actually been bound up with the DNA of the Social Enterprise World Forum as it's evolved, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of um, being quite um, quite definite around the, the, the sort of more non-profit, mm -hmm. if you like, aspect of, mm -hmm. of the social enterprise models. And I, get, I can understand that. I understand why they do it, but I don't think it's helpful in terms of you know, I think it's kind of relitigating politics of the past by trying to redefine the ones of the future. So um, this whole I idea that really, as long as there is, um, although it sounds looser, as long as there's an integrity, it, as long as there's an explicit intent, then mm -hmm. an integrity between that intent, the governance, mm -hmm. the strategy, and the accountability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, then you know that's the important thing, and really, mm -hmm. different models are fit for different purposes. Mm -hmm. And if you are talking about something which is a social community enterprise for a specific community to do a specific job in a specific place, mm -hmm. then um, you know that kind of trust, you know, sort of model, and you know, uh, you know, there's no need to distribute, you know, sort of, you know, profits because the thing is just there to provide right, service. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a cracking product which you need to get the right type of capital to scale, you know, across the world, mm -hmm. then that fundamentally means you have to have a business model which facilitates that. Mm -hmm. So, but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean the the intent is is degraded as a result. Mm -hmm. So, I, I I think you know some of these kind of these boundaries have been ultimately about managing risk, mm -hmm. but have so become mm -hmm. ideological. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to renegotiate, you know, mm -hmm. some of our thinking around around that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, in Taiwan, there's even um, social enterprises that has founded a charity and a cooperative and is founding a company so yeah. that they can, you know, use the, the correct uh, shell uh, to 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 attract either investment or donation or whatever uh, as as the organization grows, but they use the same name uh, for the three sub organizations, which is quite creative. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this this notion of intent rather than sort of artificial constraints. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So uh, so the majority of their income through trade uh, as part of the definition here. Um, yeah. So so it doesn't strictly says. 50% plus or, or it does? Well, I, I mean, okay, so one of the, the problems, I guess what we're, this is almost a guideline in as so much as like what we're trying to say here, and this is also recognizing that there is an audience here which is potentially not, you know, aware or um, informed about this. Mm -hmm. So we're basically trying to say, these things actually do have viable business models, mm -hmm. right? You that's know, right? So that's, that's almost right. like the key message. But we also recognize that there are 
some very good social enterprises which are, um, you know, within a, a larger charitable or not-for-profit organization where there is a distinct, you know, distinct right. trade. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. The, the, you the, the, know, so the that in itself is yeah. viable. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. um, but not the larger one. <laughs> but, but, but you know, but the rather body might do something else. Also, mm -hmm. it sort of, um, the, you know, there's a nuance here in terms of there may be a completely viable business model which is then best place to receive grant to do stuff mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. on market mm -hmm. because it can actually make that money go further because it, those grants don't have to fund the whole operation. Right, model. it's an amplifier for the grants, yeah, basically. It, it, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. again, it's just like it's, it's, you know, you can stack these things in different ways. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's great if you have the opportunity to have the conversation, you know, the time to have the conversations with people, mm -hmm. but sometimes you're just going to try and find shortcuts. Right, so the trade may also be like grant amplifier, uh, yeah, grant. and 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 the majority of their income may also be considered as part of the larger organization or, or not, right? So you can slice it any which way. So the majority yeah. here is mo mostly to to convey that it, it survives in the market. No, it, it's not saying that you know next year if it drops to forty percent, then it's not such an enterprise anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think I think the thing is, it's like. The, the business itself has to be viable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, whether that business is nested in a set of other activities which are funded in different ways. Mm -hmm. But what you don't want is a, a, a business model which requires just, you know, an ongoing subsidy. Sure, sure, you sure. Know? Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it basically says viable business model, but in languages yeah. that it's easier to explain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I see, cool. So, um, and... Um, I, I think this um, this flowchart is, is very useful, uh, essentially because the the trade or don't trade is the easier to tell one, uh, and the and the next one which you explain by pre distribution uh, already resonates with the various uh, legal structures here because it, as you said it, it's not a a uh, hard uh, definition it's mostly a guideline um, so so yeah yes. that's, that's very useful. Um, Right, um, and here is this huge SDG-like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, I mean, um, so this is, um, you know, is plagiarized in many sense, but and but referenced. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought what was really good about the, the the Scottish social enterprise strategy they released at the end of last year was mm -hmm. they sort of located social enterprise within a number of wider meta trends, mm -hmm. um, and so I think. The purpose of putting this in again, it's almost going back to the thing I was saying on the front page was like this is this is not a niche thing. It's actually mm -hmm. um, a dynamic, um, a dynamic model which is being enabled or driven um, by a number of other bigger things in the world. Mm -hmm. And again, hopefully, sort of you know, sort of getting people in power to see that there are things here where they. They, you know, that resonate with them where they might not have previously connected social enterprise to. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. In the traditional um, European context, you, you do see governance or political, social economy, and sustainability. That those are uh, very um, commonplace. But I'm interested to see that technology um, is phrased in a way that says, you know, with technology, there's now more connected communities, and therefore more right. community oriented. Uh, social yes. enterprises. I think this is a very powerful uh, statement, um, and also it's easier to keep everybody accountable um, and so on. But that applies to the entire social sector, not just um, yes. social enterprises. All right. Yeah, and I mean, and, and you know, th that accountability I think goes in a number of ways. One, it's that traditional idea of like, um, you know, being held to a to account. So mm -hmm. you better make sure you you're doing good, but. Uh, it's mm -hmm. also an enabler, as in, like, we are able to measure things that we mm -hmm. previously haven't been able to. And mm -hmm. and in that sense, it's a value driver mm -hmm. as well. As in, it's easier for people to see how much value or impact they're making? Or? Um, well, I, I think... You know, so our, I mean, our our government specifically is making a big play around the use of, you know, data, in mm -hmm. informing um, how to target the provision of services. Yes. 
but that will also play into how those services are then funded. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a sense of if you can better appraise where baselines are and then you know what the changes are against that baseline, mm-hmm. you can actually value the effectiveness of interventions in different ways. So mm-hmm. that I mean the environmental um, sectors doing mm-hmm. doing this, you know, I mean things like the carbon markets, you know, mm-hmm. in that sense, you know, like you know, technology as an enabler to mm-hmm. do things which are large scale and complex, you know, mm-hmm. satellite technology was essential mm-hmm. for anything to do with forestry mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the carbon market. So, you know, and you know, likewise now, I mean, the big data thing is, you mm-hmm. know, that governments are being able to drill down literally to, you know, a kid in a school in any given town, and mm-hmm. you know, understand how they are interacting with different services over time mm-hmm. um, and therefore sort of getting a sense of, you know, sort of, you know, what, what's been effective or mm-hmm. not. Um, right. So, mm-hmm. so, so I think, you know, that, that, that sort of the, the, the data, the technology and the data piece is um, us to enable, to appraise the, the, the effectiveness of different interventions in new ways and mm-hmm. that will inevitably drive new market models. That, that I completely agree. Though, um, but why is this specific to 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 tr- trading um, trading charities to social enterprises? I mean, isn't it true for all the social sector, uh, whether they're yeah. just charities or or people doing volunteering work? They are all now equipped with smartphones and other data gathering uh, sensors and, and in the future IoT technologies um, yeah. that will um, inevitably inform policy process. So, so what part in the, you know, um, you know, um, viable business model um, place in, in interacting with the data driven trend or it doesn't really? Well, well, I mean, because I, I guess what I'm saying is that organizations which previously would never have seen themselves as social enterprises mm-hmm. effectively, they were grant funded because people hoped mm-hmm. they would deliver stuff but didn't know, mm-hmm. will before they know it, actually be working in environments where they're being directly mm-hmm. financially rewarded for the success of their interventions. Ah, right. So organizations okay, which didn't exist mm-hmm. in markets mm-hmm, mm-hmm. will find themselves in mm-hmm. a performance, you know, so they'll be effectively trading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, where, you, know, so, you know, so I mean, I think there is a sense of um, social enterprise is not just a sort of thing of social people wanting to do social enterprise themselves. I mean, as soon as government, I mean, this is outside of technology, Mm-hmm. But as soon as government, for example, says rather than us deliver services to people with disabilities, mm-hmm. rather than us contracting someone else to deliver those services, mm-hmm. going to the point where we're actually um, delegating budgets to service users mm-hmm. who are then choosing who they purchase their own services mm-hmm. from, mm-hmm. you've gone from a situation where once effectively people just saw them as kind of service providers mm-hmm. to actually, uh, um, you know, engage with customers in in mm-hmm. a competitive environment mm-hmm. so, so, so sometimes an enterprise is not an enterprise for an autonomous decision it's just the mm-hmm. market conditions change around mm-hmm. an organization mm-hmm. and it finds itself having to trade whether it likes it or not mm-hmm. i see well that line of thinking eventually leads to like universal basic income and so on um, <laughs> yeah well potentially um mm-hmm. but i think I, well, unless there is a, a radically brave and bold government, I see that's. Um, I think I think I think there'll be an evolution of the way things work before we get there. Sure, like like gradually, not like yeah. overnight, of course. Um, yeah, I, I think this is actually very insightful. So, um, as you said, um, the M- NGOs or MPOs uh, would transition uh, to this kind of social enterprise uh, market business model, not because they, they think it's cool or hip, but the market conditions uh, created around them uh, makes it easier for them to, to and, do the transition. Well, not just easier, it makes it compulsory, potentially. Oh, really? And so I think you get to an, in, 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 an interesting situation there in terms of who, as, as citizens, who do we want? Mm-hmm. <laughs> succeeding in those environments mm-hmm. do we do we want you know a large international corporate in the way that you know a lot of those corporates are running prisons now mm-hmm. who may want to do a good job to the letter of the contract but essentially mm-hmm. are still driven by a profit a profit motive mm-hmm. or do we want organizations being able to successfully compete mm-hmm. for contracts but are still driven from a place of care and compassion mm-hmm. 
Right. You know, so I, so mm -hmm. so there's there's suddenly a, a real keen interest in making sure that mission led organisations are have the capability to succeed uh, mm -hmm. when they're in direct competition with organisations which are driven by different incentives. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but that's switching from the government doing businesses with well businesses uh, to businesses with a purpose, and then eventually social enterprises. But what about the, the other way? What about the uh, uh, subsidies that the government are issuing to to local NPOs or regional NPOs? Um, are, are there any market uh, forces that makes them social enterprises? Well, no. I mean, mm -hmm. I think this is. This is why it's a contested space, right? Mm. Because government may actually, depending on who the government is, mm. might be less interested in who delivers the contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they will be going out and it will be like, okay, um, we're contracting for, you know, um, door delivered meals for the elderly. Mm -hmm. And an organization which was set up as a charitable organization that's mm -hmm. been doing this for years on a kind mm -hmm. of rollover contract mm -hmm. is suddenly going head to head with an international corporate mm -hmm. which says, we'll install a microwave and deliver you 30 frozen meals a month. <laughs> that's you right. Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I think, you know, this is again, it's a site. So there'll be a challenge of adaptation from traditional service providers. Mm -hmm. There's an opportunity for new mission-led organizations to do things in good ways. Mm -hmm. And then there is the challenge from big established commercial outfits mm -hmm. who are just expanding, you know, to the list of things that, that they do. So um, whether we run old people's homes or prisons um, or kind of <laughs> maybe we run them in the same kind of way, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a really sort of, there's a key question here as, you know, that outsourcing agenda, um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's already here, but continues. Who do we want to enable to be able to win those contracts? Mm -hmm. People that are doing it from a position of care or people who are doing mm -hmm. it from a position of profit? Right. And you and, can either make it compulsory as in only those vendors with a clear social mission enters the bid at all, or you can do it, you know, more, uh, more gradually saying, you know, uh, enterprises with the social mission gets this much um, um, consideration when, when we're uh, selecting bids and things like that. Yeah, so it needs it needs sophisticated procurement, you know. Which mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't think you can, I don't think you can discriminate necessarily who goes mm -hmm. for contracts. Sometimes, I mean, what what do you say? You know, you need a certain legal form. We, we're um, actually that considering that at, at this very yeah. moment. <laughs> but um, um, but but it's more a case of I suppose you know, make it be more explicit around the type of services that mm -hmm. you're procuring. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you're procuring, um, you know, door, you know, uh, doorstep meals to the elderly, mm -hmm. maybe you're not just procuring the food service, but you're also making sure you're explicit about um, uh, procuring the face-to-face -face contact on a regular mm -hmm. basis and the supporting mm -hmm. care which goes around. You know, so I think, you know, there... But you can't rely on government to be, you know, sophisticated in that way because we've seen in other sectors mm -hmm. that they end up outsourcing mm -hmm. based on price, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily value. Mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, I can remember good conversations with colleagues in the UK that, um, you know, spoke around quite cynically that social enterprise was used as the acceptable edge of an outsourcing agenda mm -hmm. of that conservative government. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Scotland, you had a far more intelligent in conversation around who is best, uh, you know, which organisations are best to deliver what in an economy or a mm -hmm. social economy. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that the big corporates don't have a role, they definitely do, but also recognising that other organisations may be, you know, be better placed and also create longer, more value for the community and more value for the taxpayer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, if you're able to to, 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 to compete. So, so I think, um, yeah, there's, there's whole heaps of stuff around mm -hmm. sort of like the way we set up the markets mm -hmm. rather than just build the enterprises. And that goes back to this kind of infrastructure building. That's it's right, not just that's right. it's not, mm. not just about supporting entrepreneurs and organisations. Mm. It's about trying to create all the conditions mm -hmm. which kind of make um, you know generate the maximum value for society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's that's extremely clear. So so if it's transparent and, and accountable in some way, then there will be less um, criticisms of people saying you know it's just justifying outsourcing. But people will see then those organisations' mission is actually aligned with the government's mission uh, when, when doing this kind of procurement. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's less subjective, right? I mean, it's mm. just like, um, you know, more full value accounting will, will enable, you will, it will actually differentiate, mm. you know, different different services. Mm. Right, so accountability in this sense is more of a, you know, a publicly um, auditable kind of value alignment uh, than the traditional way of, you know, answering every inquiry from the parliament or things like that. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like One part of it is about that kind of traditional public accountability, mm -hmm. but the other thing is the value driver, mm -hmm. as in if you can demonstrate the value you're creating, mm -hmm. that's actually a real enabler. Mm -hmm. And of course, the third, the third part about data measurement is actually it's good management information, mm -hmm. and every social enterprise should be incredibly keen to actually mm -hmm. understand it's having so it can improve its its work right right so so again a data-driven um, justification not just to the value but also to the policies uh, around that value okay well thank you that's very very um, powerful um, yeah I, I think the other ones are are pretty commonplace um, the circular economy is getting a lot of um, attention right now um but yeah is there anything you would like no, to nothing say else in there as um, i say i think they are generic not least because as i say i i i took a lot of them directly from the scottish word well, well certainly they wouldn't say rangatira tanga uh, um yeah um uh rangatira tanga which is basically the it's the the principle of self-determination for for maori people okay so so um, yeah, I see in your agenda design and your, um, and also actually in the, the events that I attended in, in New Zealand, there is a lot of dedicated space, dedicated uh, rituals, I would say even, uh, and dedicated um, conversations uh, with the subjects of, of Māori, uh, I would say worldview, not just people. Um, so, so is that, um, how, how does it tie into social enterprise? Yeah, well, I mean, that's a conversation that is being had. Mm -hmm. um, we have been doing um, a, quite a bit of work recently of search enterprise in the, the Māori context. Mm -hmm. And what's been clear has um, Māori do want to, uh, are, are interested, but also wants to take it apart and put it back together in their own understanding, mm -hmm. values and image. So... Um, uh, there's a Maori term called kopapa, which is the way of doing effectively, mm -hmm. you know, and and so social enterprise with um, kopapa Maori is mm -hmm. one of the conversations now. It's just like we don't want just another, you know, Western idea foisted upon us, mm -hmm. you know, you know, sort of a more, you know, well-intended colonialism, but it's still a, a colonization of mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, so we, we've learned the hard way in some respects, but there is a, uh, there is a, a lot of energy and interest in social enterprise, but it has to be reinterpreted to come from a place which is owned by Mari. So that's going to be a really sort of interesting dynamic, I think, to the upcoming World Forum. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll be sure to attend as much as I can because um, we're we're just working on the transitional justice with Indigenous people here also, and. Um, they, they are also uh, voicing that, you know, none of the SDGs are indigenous generated. So, so yeah. they, they really yeah. need to be nativized yeah. uh, in a way in, in their respective cultures. Um, so that would be very interesting. Um, this one is, I think, entirely so that, just factual. Yeah, I mean, that, that, the mm. point of this slide is really just sort of building confidence to you know, politicians here that this isn't mm -hmm. something which is dreamed up in, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in a backwater in New Zealand. Um, so, I mean, there is probably issues of veracity in, a, in any number of these statements. But um, again, the the purpose is is really just to give a sense of momentum and, and scale. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and and so the barriers. Um, yeah. So. So this is probably the stuff which is, you know, most specific and of, of interest mm -hmm. in terms of New Zealand in a, in a development context. Mm -hmm. um, like anywhere, there has been social enterprise, uh, social community enterprise for forever, really, mm -hmm. or at least, you know, 300 years, the Maori would say much, much longer um, in New Zealand. But what we haven't had mm -hmm. has been this more intentional or formalized approach mm -hmm. to the support and development of social enterprise. Mm -hmm. So um, 
while um, some organisations have done well, um, you know, we it's been inefficient and we haven't been realising the full potential of our people mm-hmm. and um, the full potential of um, the sector. So what we're, we're basically saying here, you know, in terms of there are a number of barriers here mm-hmm. where we're not asking government to lead, but government has mm-hmm. to be in an enabler because there are certain things that only government has the um, capability and resources mm-hmm. to support. And mm-hmm. it is a traditional role of business to step in in market building mm-hmm. um, or areas of market failure. Right. Uh, so the we here uh, refers to Akina. Uh, right. uh, it, it, yes, it does mm-hmm. there. So um, some of this is quite Akina centric. And mm-hmm. I guess we can only really, you know, we didn't mm-hmm. consult on this document. It was mm-hmm. our document. So we can mm-hmm. only really speak from our point of view. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think it's also fair to say, in terms of sector development, we probably mm-hmm. um, have a fairly unique insight in terms of we've been doing this for, you know, mm-hmm. longer than anyone else. Mm-hmm. We across the country um, and, y- you know, we, we, we've had um, the... Uh, the the scale I suppose to at least have any number of learning experiences mm-hmm. which have given us sort of an ability to sort of bring some of these sort of insights together. Right, but but uh, I mean this line is basically saying there are more than seven hundred organisations needing Akina services, right? Yes. All right. So so it, it's more like you know this is a growing sector and it has grown exceeding Akina's uh, ability to yeah. provide. Services. That's right. And look, I mean, w- so mm-hmm. we, 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 we know how many we've worked with. We know mm-hmm. we can't reach everyone, and we mm-hmm. know we're not even. <laughs> we don't know everyone as well. So mm-hmm. there are there's who we work with, those that we can't work with, and then mm-hmm. those we don't even know of. <laughs> so, <Okay>. uh, <laughs> so there, there, there's it, it's that sort of sense of um, you know there's real kind of capacity and un- underserved demand here to 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 work into. I see. So. Um, so, because you've talked about consultation, uh, I understand that the, the statement and, uh, more broadly speaking, this year's uh, governmental action plan, there's a 500 million NZ dollars or something like that being put. Is that uh, over a year or over more? No, years? So, so, yeah, so the government two months ago announced an investment into sector development of 5.5 mm-hmm. million. That's right. Um, which is bigger than anything that's been on the table before, mm-hmm. but it's still relatively modest, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, sure. it's still small. It's still peanuts, really, compared to, you know. Um, and that is over, it's really over three years, but over four financial years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, mm-hmm. And, um, and I mean, that, that, that investment really came as a, a direct result of uh, us beating a path to the Prime Minister's door and pitching him. And saying, mm-hmm. you know, your government departments across the board are increasingly interested in this area, mm-hmm. but you have a coordination and an implementation problem. Mm-hmm. You know, you cannot lead on this. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, you benefit from it mm-hmm. and you're already engaged in it, but you do not have the capacity to coordinate and lead this. Right. So if you mm-hmm. invest into sector development and work with a strategic partner, mm-hmm. you know, not only will you um, build a sector out there, you'll also enable uh, government to build or, you know, determine its own coordinated approach. Yep. So this yeah. is addressing barrier seven, uh, uncoordinated government action and yeah. lack of enabling policy. So, so, so this investment is entirely going to the social enterprise sector. But in the form of various different ministries, or is or in the no, area? so it, it's an external investment. Um, mm-hmm. It is there for a strategic partner mm-hmm. to be resourced and resource mm-hmm. key sector development. Uh, you know, key key activities related to sector development. I see. I see. So it's external partner uh, acting to kind of interface uh, with governments. In, in, yeah, in to, this be, way. to be to be. To be a primary intermediary, effectively. I see, I see. Well, and, um, and you know, and without doubt, we see ourselves as that organisation. Mm-hmm. Um, but there will be a competitive mm-hmm. tender process. 
Mm-hmm. They might not have been if we hadn't been so close to an election, but we, <laughs> but everything becomes politicised before an election. Mm-hmm. So there, there will be um, very, very shortly, but there will be a competitive process. Mm-hmm. But um, we also, I mean, uh, we were keen to say that that 5.5 is not a finite amount. Mm-hmm. We believe that that 5.5, if government basically, as it has, puts it down, mm-hmm. that will facilitate co-investment from the corporate philanthropic mm-hmm. local government mm-hmm. sectors so mm-hmm. we we said look if we if we were the steward of that resource mm-hmm. we could multiply that by three or four times mm-hmm. right you know so basically mm-hmm. to, to, to increase the war chest you know up mm-hmm. to about 15 to 20 million over that time period mm-hmm. and we, we, and it may not be um the philanthropic sector for example paying in in one lump sum like government but it will be more about co-investment on of different activities, mm-hmm. which refer to the interest of those different mm-hmm. um, those different stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Right, that's the the amplifier uh, impact effect that you were just referring to. Um, yes. so, so that's great. That's great, uh, and I'm, I'm glad that it's a focused uh, external sector because uh, around three years ago, uh, Taiwan passed a three-year plan on social enterprise development, roughly exactly the same amount of money. Uh, but but it was um, channeled through various different ministries, uh, and um, there's effects, uh, pretty good effects in each of the ministries. But there's very little horizontal uh, coordination uh, after the the transition of the ministry with a portfolio from Yen uh, in the previous um, cabinet. So there's like half a year where this uh, plan keeps running, but none of the ministries know what the other ministries are doing. Um, yeah, I mean, but beyond that, I think there's some really good strategic governments why governments shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. One, it misses the opportunity for leverage. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like, you know, very rarely would you know philanthropic be willing to give money government to do something, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. But, but <laughs> a, a third independent party can mm-hmm. leverage. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is around effectively, um, well, credibility. Mm-hmm. You know, independence. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I think also the convening power. You know, government always should be at the table in a capacity Mm -hmm. but it cannot necessarily be the convener because it compromises its own position that's exactly right yes government turns Mm -hmm. up everyone will be pointing the finger and wanting something from it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know if it's you know whereas an an independent party Mm -hmm. does it it can it can reframe that kind of Mm -hmm. those those, um relationships Mm -hmm. as a anarchist i completely agree um and also um yeah, I think it, it makes sense for the government, while it still exists, um, to, to endorse this kind of uh, external sector development. But when it owns, or as you said, convenes it, um, then it, it does lose uh, credibility without very strong leadership. Like if it's the national agenda, perhaps, but, but it's not the national agenda at that point. And, and I also think there's a sense, and it, this may be different depending on the capability within government, mm-hmm. but... Um, there's a, there's a sense if government has to lead, it almost has to assume it knows what to do. Mm-hmm. Whereas if it if it's an, you know enables another party to lead, it can actually go through its own design process, mm-hmm. you know, and actually be part of a learning journey to understand its role rather than to be seen to we're going to do A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. So I so I think there's a sense of. Um, there, there was so many upside for government not being in that position, mm-hmm. um, and although it finds it difficult to let go of control sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like there, there, there's a much bigger prize if it can mm-hmm. right but but are you still um like including uh career public servants in the dialogues and in the process and in designs Abs- absolute absolutely and what we'll be if we won the the, the contract to be the supplier mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right from the beginning, we'd be wanting to set up a an adaptive governance model, mm-hmm. which would hopefully, and I'm not saying we're going to achieve this, mm-hmm. um, but what we will angle for is to say, let, let us set up the, the, you know, the governance of this three-year program mm-hmm. at, on a basis where we set out our high-level strategic objectives, mm-hmm. and then we have a policy of complete transparency, but an ability to change um, you know, our plans and our approaches based on the reality of, Mm -hmm. you know, what we see. Um, so I I think, you know, that adaptive governance model would actually give rich learning to government and Mm -hmm. give it a far better input into the policies or levers that it can pull to, Mm -hmm. to more public good. 
So mm -hmm. I, I take it to mean that you will say monthly or quarterly, uh, build a feedback cycle and review the, the goals, just like a traditional agile development. Yeah, sense. I think mm -hmm. I think you'd probably want it monthly. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you'd want it quite close, mm -hmm. and I think you'd what you'd want to do. You'd actually uh, try and identify senior officials mm -hmm. um, who can effectively be champions within the system. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so maybe I mean, if I had at least off the top of my head, a perfect world, mm -hmm. I might go for three deputy chief executives. You won't mm -hmm. get a chief executive, but mm -hmm. you could get three um, DCEs, mm -hmm. maybe one from you know, a env environmental, mm -hmm. one from a social, and one mm -hmm. from a kind of, you know, mm -hmm. cross agency, be it a treasury or a kind of mm -hmm. um, a minister and cabinet's office, mm -hmm. or we've got what's called the social investment agency. Mm -hmm. And if you could convene, um, you know, informed, um, progressive senior officials, you know, to that table mm -hmm. who can then actually then drive stuff through government um, in terms of what comes out of that kind of adaptive governance style, I think you'd get a really good result. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that sounds great. But uh, why would the ministries devote as much resources if they don't have control over the process? Well, the, the, advantage, the advantage of here of going all the way up to the, the PM mm -hmm. was it was the PM who directed the spend. Ah. So it, it mm -hmm. doesn't belong to any agency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there is a lead commissioning agency, but it is doing it on behalf mm -hmm. of whole of government. Ah, okay. So, so it's directly PM, like intervened yeah. Uh, yeah. structure. So I, I, I actually think we kind of got lucky here, or well, we may not. I mean, government is very good at snatching defeat out of the, the jaws of victory. But because we went, we got up to the most powerful level, mm -hmm we kind of got ahead of the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's actually framed this in a kind of more of a kind of holistic government approach than, mm -hmm. you know, which I think, you know, stops uh, further down the line, sort of one agency saying, I have to own this completely and it should be done, you know, with our, with our interests in mind. Mm -hmm. And other agencies going, well, this has nothing to do with mm -hmm. us, so we won't buy into it. Because this is such a systems issue, it really has to come from that kind of a, a, a cross-agency place, I think. I see. Well, this is very clear. And yeah, I think um, yeah, there's more chance in victory than it being snatched, um, I think, uh, for, for this plan. Not knowing <laughs> anything about your political situation, but <laughs> I, think, I think that this does uh, lower the risk of any individual participation agency over the course of three years. Um, yeah. And I think that that really helps. Um, and this, I, I think I've got most of the factual yeah, information. That just, yeah, it kind of, it, the point of this slide was just to inform MPs that this again hasn't just happened, there's been a progressive story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and this, yeah. this outlines basically our roadmap. Um, mm -hmm. So we're basically saying a three-year program, you'd kind of have four work streams. Mm -hmm. um, so three of them are the kind of trifecta, you know, thinking around building mm -hmm. capability and supporting mm -hmm. talent. Yep. The second one is an enabling finance environment. And the third is this kind of market access, be that around consumers, procurement, mm -hmm. or this more nuanced area of, mm -hmm. you know, payments for results or in, in impact payments. Mm -hmm. What, what kind then, of IP are you looking at when you're saying transferring uh, IP yeah, to providers? So um, what we mean there is actually developmental IP. Mm -hmm. So um, for the last sort of five and a half years, Arkina has been delivering development programs and services. Mm -hmm. So we've got workshops, we've got mm -hmm. community development models, we've got accelerators, mm -hmm. we've got growth services, we've got investment readiness, you know. Wow. <laughs> in, 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 in bigger ecosystems, mm -hmm. you know, you have a more specialized intermediaries, but because mm -hmm. we're quite small mm -hmm. and there was nothing here, mm -hmm. we you do everything. To Exactly. <laughs> because if you do one bit, they uh -huh. can want to the edge, or if you do up here, that you don't get enough deal. Right. So, so we actually, I think we again we had the advantage of, although it had its challenges, right. that we created quite a sort of an integrated model which kind of made sense. Right. But I think going forward, um, if we got this work, mm -hmm. we would start to, we would effectively move away from being a retailer mm -hmm. and look to become more of a wholesaler. Right. So, so you're scaling out yourselves. Basically. Yeah, so what we'd want to see, yeah. as there's momentum, we are seeing local hubs, mm -hmm. you know, cultural, thematic um, uh, support 
um, organisations pop up. So our mm-hmm. role would, rather than delivering stuff ourselves, would be to try and identify those capability building organisations mm-hmm. and help them develop effective practice and mm-hmm. connect them to each other. Right. So, so, yeah. no, so at the ahead. end of three mm-hmm. years, you know, a success might be a network of 20 different support organisations across the country, mm-hmm. which were embedded in their place, their communities, um, their thematic areas of specialization, mm-hmm. their, their cultural orientation, um, and we're there all the time. I mean, because one of our problems, we do work in the regions, but we're in that sort of old age problem of development where we fly in and we fly out, mm-hmm. or we drive, in and drive out. Mm-hmm. And we've tried to correct that, but inevitably, if you want to have really successful local ecosystems, mm-hmm. The support has to be part of that. It has to be all, all, always there. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. so we so we, we fully mm-hmm. recognise strategically that success after three years is this kind of network of support mm-hmm. rather than just a kind of McDonald's of business development. You know? Okay. Yeah. Personally, I'm I'm travelling with all the uh, different ministries and agencies in Taiwan, engaging with social enterprise, which may be seven or eight uh, different ministries. Um, every two weeks uh, to one of the regional social enterprise uh, clusters or centers. Uh, there were like four or five of them. Uh, and I think um, every region really grows very differently. And yes. the, the, the more the more we, we delegate um, the community building uh, into the local ecosystem, the, the more variety we will get as a result because the social problems and the social issues in every city is really different. And but if yeah. we we just sit here in the capital city in Taipei and and kind of force uh, through market and policies all the social enterprise to look exactly the same as um, at some points that South Korea did, uh, then then we will get very good solutions to certain issues or problems, but we'll never discover uh, any other issues or problems. Yeah, I mean that kind of mm-hmm. try, trying to drive uniformity is mm-hmm. an antithesis to enabling innovation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think you want diversity, but you also want what you don't want is variability in quality. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, while you want to celebrate diversity, your counterbalance mm-hmm. is actually connectivity between peers. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, so I think a big part of this is not just support, you know, enabling individual organizations, but making sure there's a healthy mm-hmm. and supported peer network mm-hmm. between those support yep. organizations because yep. they will smooth out their practice by, mm-hmm. uh, you know, through interaction. Right. Completely agreed. That's great. That's great. So the quality assurance standards uh, refers not just to the uh, governance or the business model, but, but the, the whole thing, right? The, the services um, they provide and so on. So I think quality should be something across the board. Mm-hmm. Where you've indicated it on there, that's really talking around as this gets to scale, mm-hmm. if you want to get, you know, um, a basically scaled market transactions, mm-hmm. how do buyers know that they're actually dealing with a real, mm-hmm. you know? So, I mean, it could be things like, um, like you know, B Corp certification mm-hmm. as a insurance sure um or it could be a uh, a new legal form mm-hmm. you know which can act as a shortcut or mm-hmm. it could be um you know sort of some kind of you know uh, national body doing some kind of you know sort of annual kind mm-hmm. of accreditation mm-hmm. so it, it's really trying to make sure uh how do you manage risk but enable scale right so this is more about the the form of governance uh not the product or services, uh, which is, no. is more like uh, the PNA work guaranteed way that you, you just mentioned. I, I, so I mean, here I'm talking, things. it's specifically around transactions. So yeah. this is less around the capability. This is, mm. you know, you know, you get more successful social enterprise activity if you, you get more trading activity. Mm-hmm. That trading activity comes from a lot of people which aren't actually directly connected to social enterprises mm-hmm. and may not know. Mm-hmm. So things like... How do you give confidence to consumers? You know, yeah. you know things like fair trade. How in social procurement, where um, bigger private and public sector organisations may mm-hmm. have preferred um, supplier status um, or want to procure for social uh, or community benefit within mm-hmm. their procurement clauses, mm-hmm. how can they do that in an efficient way where they may mm-hmm. not have that capability within mm-hmm. themselves mm-hmm. to raise social impact? Mm-hmm. So. 
so I think quality assurance there is um, managing risk and enabling efficient transactions. I see. So more like organic farming labels and, and things right, like that. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And we're at the last slide. Um, yeah, and so, so mm -hmm. that's, you know, yeah. the, you know the, uh, the event coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and, and, I, and I would say, I mean, it's, it's been a, a huge piece of work for us, but mm -hmm. we always intended it to be in so much it was never about an event. It was always a sector building play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, the, the activity that's gone up to date, the, the kind of the energy, the align, uh, alignment, the conversations, the connections, the learning that will happen at the event, and then the momentum into legacy afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not an event. It's, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it, it's a catalyst as, as far as we see it. See it. Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, I hope I can help in whichever way. Uh, and um, it, it looks like um, that you, you've got this uh, local network as well as your government networks are really connected at this point. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll just uh, see how I can help. Maybe. Yeah, no, look, we'll look forward to meeting you, Audrey. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Bartlett described you as um, the smartest person he's ever met. So mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I look, look forward to, to, to having more conversation. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for your time. It's almost you. yeah, more than an hour now. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, so I'll publish the recording if it's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Cool. That'd be great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yes, bye.